Hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm trying this uh, outdoors recording again. Currently got a little fire going in front of me. I'm out in my yard with a little campfire in the middle of the night. And it's dark out. And I'll tell you right now, it's kind of spoopy. But let's see if we can jump into some stories and some discussions while I try to scare myself. I, I will let you know. This is a little different from my previous uh, recording where I was walking around because I'm sitting down this time and I may have had the biggest, fattest s'mores over this campfire that you've ever seen. Yeah, it may be a little bit of cheating, but mm, it was worth it. So I've got this story on my subreddit called Hiking State Park Encounter. Hiking State Park Encounter. Hiking State Park Encounter. From Eric Draven 38416 and it sounds, did I say sick? 38416. It sounds pretty scary. And before the fire dies to just a couple of embers and I'm left alone in the dark with nothing but a mosquito torch, let's get this going, let's get scared. Okay, I'm going in. Longtime subscriber, I really enjoy your channel. This is one of four paranormal encounters I've had in my life. If you enjoy this one, I can send more. Thanks. This is not a sighting, but an encounter with something. Back in 2010, when I was in a lot better shape than I am now, I hiked the Pinnacle Trail at Table Rock State Park in South Carolina, which, ironically, I live very close to now. There's still a pic I took of myself at the top of my Facebook profile. I was the only one on the mountain as it was early April, and it was early in the day. The trail reaches all the way to the top. It took me two hours to get there. It was beautiful. I rested had a snack and some water, then headed back down. I was about 30 minutes from the entrance when I noticed that I didn't hear anything. I stopped dead in my tracks. There was no wind, no bugs, no birds, no running water in the distance, nothing. It was like I was in a vacuum or something. Just FYI, there is running water or streams on most of the trails that is easily heard and very loud at times. I actually tapped my ear with my finger to see if I could still hear, and I could. I look around, like, what the heck? I guess it's like what a bug feels like when you trap it with a glass jar. Ooh, I like that description. That's a really creepy and good way to look at it. Because you know a bug would be pretty horrified in that situation, too. Trapped like a bug in a jar. Moving on. Then the smell hit me. Having raised many hunting dogs and pets when I was younger, it was like a doghouse bed that hasn't been cleaned in a long while. Except it's ten times more pungent. Ugh, I almost became sick. I could smell it just reading it, dang. There was something there. There was no doubt in my mind, but it was staying hidden. I looked around everywhere. Nothing. Nothing but the odor was all around me. I carried a pistol most places I went. I have a concealed carry permit. I didn't even think of drawing it. Didn't seem like it would do any good for some reason. I finally booked it. Screwed the noise. Or screw the noise, I thought. About 30 yards up, I see a doe that is just eating grass or something. She looks at me and is not scared in the slightest. <clears throat> I think this is very odd. Most deer haul tail when they see you. I continued down the trail like a bat out of heck. The sound came back at some point further down. When I made it to the entrance, I came across a young couple entering the park. They looked at me like I had three heads with one coming out of my butt. Nice. I left and went home. I had sort of forgotten about it until one day I was listening to scary stories that I'd discovered on YouTube, maybe a year or so after that, while I was painting my house. I stopped immediately when I heard a very similar instance being, instance being told. It was the vacuum silence someone said they experienced. I think it was a park ranger story. I found out later some people call it the Oz effect, or the silence. I also saw an episode of Paranormal Witness that was very similar to mine in 2011, about a police officer hiking and seeing Bigfoot. Am I making this up? Well... Decide for yourself. It's one of those had-to-have-been-there kinds of things, I guess. 
Personally, I would much rather watch it on TV and be entertained. <clears throat> oh, the fire's drying out my throat. Personally, I would much rather watch it on TV and be entertained. Real life is much more frightening. Well, if this was real life... <clears throat> Whoa, did you hear that? My voice went way up there. Anyway, if this was real life, like you claim it is, then I would say this is quite frightening in itself. So, I've never actually heard of the Oz effect, but it makes sense that it would be called uh, the, the Silence. I'm going to Google this right quick. The Oz effect in the woods. Ooh. Let's see. I've got a link from science.howstuffworks.com. In UFO Reality 1983, I won't read it all, don't want to get copyright striked, but apparently someone saw a UFO in England, Manchester, England. Let's see, on the afternoon of April 15th, 1989. Ooh, hmm. The Oz Factor, and that didn't mention anything about this silence. Here's a Reddit post. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Have you ever experienced the Oz Factor? Eerie silence, changes in surroundings, feeling of dread, while in the woods or countryside? And what happened? This is an r slash missing 411, so you know you're going to get some good responses. That was by Save Jaden Rogers, if you want to look that up on Reddit yourself. I won't go into any answers on there. Once again, I, don't, I haven't asked permission to read any of their answers, but... It reminds me of a story I read somewhere on Reddit. And to, and to just summarize, someone was hunting in the woods, and the clouds just gathered round. It was, it was clear, a clear sky, and then suddenly gray skies just appeared, like some sort of fantasy film where the bad guy summons darkness. And then <clears throat> it was like an invisible man was walking towards them. They heard footsteps, but didn't see a form. But it was getting closer. And that great, that not great, but that silence that people talk about happened long before any of this weird stuff happened in that story. So if things get quiet, then something's about to go down. I need to remember that while I'm out here. I've got woods to my left, woods to my back, which sounds like a very bad idea. But hopefully my uh, small semi-privacy fence uh, protects me. And then again, I'm sure half the crap in the woods could probably jump twice that high. So that's the Oz effect or the Oz factor. I'm going to have to look more into that myself. That is so cool. Thank, thank you for that uh, submission. Let's see. Thank you, Eric Draven 38416 for that. That was spooky. Let's move on to fortune to the farms and hamlets that they haunted. Bat Bear never told me to do bad things, never did anything creepy or crazy. He was just around for six years, then he was gone as, uh, <clears throat> gone as suddenly as he arrived. My gran used to say that pukas were wild, and Bat Bear was wild. I still like to think he was there when I needed him. That was kind of heartwarming. A puka, huh? I've heard that before. Was it in a movie that I saw that? Anyway, before I uh, offend people, again, let's look up... Let's see. What did I mispronounce? Dungarees or dungarees. I have... I can't remember how you pronounce that. Pronounce... Pronounce dungarees. Dungarees. Dungarees, that's right. Knew it all along. Didn't even need to look it up. What? Okay, Black Cat 1206, on to your other encounter. Titled, The Kelpie. Did y'all hear that? There was something in the tree. <laughs> Just nighttime squirrels, darkness. Just some nighttime squirrels. The Kelpie, cryptid. Uh, let's see. My very worst story told me, hmm, okay, typing, 
typo here. My very worst story. Told to me by my Irish granny. Okay. Kelpies are malevolent shapeshifters, aquatic spirits originally from Scotland. But all Celts use this creepy myth as a boogeyman story for children to be careful around water. The name Kelpie could come from the Gaelic words kale peach or kolpach, kolpak, meaning heifer or colt. They have the power to transform into either a white, tame pony to lure children, or a beautiful young woman to lure men and boys. They're often seen beside rivers or locks. Feeling unable, feeling unable to resist its siren-like appeal, the victim will approach, and the Kelpie will persuade them to sit on their back. However, once the child is on their back, the spirit will change again into a huge, terrible-looking beast with red or jet black eyes and a sticky coat and mane. The Kelpie will then jump into the water, dragging their victim down to the depth to devour them. The sound of a Kelpie's tail entering water is the same as thunder, and those who pass rivers and hear unholy wailing are bowling. Or bawling. I think they mean bawling there. I don't think they're, uh, bowling, but that would be pretty fun to bowl with a Kelpie, I'm not gonna lie. If a Kelpie is seen, it's a very bad omen. Well, that's a, that's a new bug that I haven't been hearing tonight. Anyway, if a Kelpie is seen, it's a bad omen. They do have a Hercules heel, though. I think, I think you mean Achilles heel. I've never heard it called Hercules heel. If someone gains control of a Kelpie's bridle, they'll have control over the Kelpie. But it's not worth it. Yeah, if I'm going to be risked, if I'm going to risk uh, being dragged underneath the water and drowning, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. Kelpie mount for the rest of your life? Drowning. Hmm. I think, okay, honestly, I've always thought drowning would be the worst way to go. While it not be, it, it'll be, it'll be painful. While it may not be as painful as, say, burning, it would be more traumatic. It would be like, imagine the panic. Imagine the darkness and the water overwhelming you and all of your senses and the feeling of panic and hopelessness that that brings. I think I would rather burn than drown. But that's my opinion. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me, uh, I'm gonna quickly Google this, since they have a link in their story. Make sure it wasn't copied somewhere. I don't want to get in trouble for reading it. Paranoid darkness over here. We got a lot of stories tonight. There's a werewolf one. I'm hoping it's a bit longer than these, because I love werewolf stuff. I'm not seeing anything. <clears throat> so tonight, I'm already getting a little creeped out out here. It's a lot darker than expected. I used to live in the country my entire life until moving out as an adult and working my way from apartment to apartment to normal housing and to finally owning a small place of my own. Now, I won't say it's small, it's normal. I'm very happy with it. Anyway. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next story. Talking about my time in the country. I never did get used to the darkness. Even though that's in the name, I guess. Darkness prevails. Let's see, okay. Gold Angel 1119 sends us another story. I believe we uh, read one from her on my first attempt at walking while narrating the other day. Well one, well one. Okay, <laughs> I apologize. Sometimes there are typos, and I'll try to make sense of them. This all happened in December of 2018. One, th one time at night I woke up and thought I saw something outside the window. I could see through the little spaces in the curtains, and I saw a werewolf part dog like Alaskan dog with muscle part human? Uh, I'm sorry, Gold, Gold Angel. We'll, we'll, we'll have to move on from that. I can't... Uh, I'm having trouble reading it. But I appreciate the submission. All right, here. Let's go on to the next one. The Figure from My Backyard from R.M. Boss Blake. I was in my backyard playing with my sister. At the time, I was four and my sister was eight. It was the middle of summer and we were playing with the hose. Sounds like a good time. We were soaking wet and having the time of our lives. 
my sister, Alexa, went inside to grab some food for us. I was sitting on the deck, on the deck, and had a sudden urge to look at the big tree next to our garage. I did. Excuse me. And saw the silhouette of a woman, one that looked like my mother. Now, she had died a month before I turned two, so I have no memories of her, and I only knew what she looked like through pictures in our living room. When I saw this figure, I was in awe, because it was beautiful. I'd never seen anything like it. I walked toward it at a pace so fast I was almost running, running into my mother's arms. The figure came towards me, ready to hug me, and I reached her. I wrapped my arms around her, and she wrapped hers around me. We held each other for what, se for what seemed like an eternity. Sorry, my hick accent was trying to come through. I enjoyed it because it was my mother, the one I'd never really met. She said something I couldn't understand, but I didn't care. I replied, Mommy? Mom? Is it really you? There was a silence, and she was starting to let go of me, so I did the same. She put one hand on one of my shoulders and her other hand on my other shoulder, and we stared into each other's eyes. She said, Oh, sweetie, I'm not your mother. Her voice changed into one that sounded demonic and warped. I was startled. I jumped back, causing her hands, or its hands, to come off of my shoulders. It started to change its appearance. Horns grew out of its forehead, and these devil-like wings came out, and the body itself changed most of all. The skin turned coal black, and it became taller. The nails turned into claws, and then I heard my sister calling my name in her cheerful voice. I turned around and saw that she was now crying and terrified. Oh, wait, wait. She saw that I was crying and terrified. She set down two plates on the deck and ran to me, and I ran to her. I hugged her tightly and even grabbed her shirt to hold on to her. She decided she would go into our room and just get me to... She decided we should go to their... our room. Okay, there we go. And just get me to settle down. I started seeing that figure when I was alone, with that tree in the backyard. Every summer, on one specific day each year, the same thing would happen. The hugging, the joy, then the fear. One day the tree had to be cut down for some reason. I didn't see the figure for two years after that. Just starting last month, some work to... Just starting last month, there was work done to chop the giant logs of the cut-down tree. We were making it smaller so we could get rid of it. The same night as we started with the chopping, I started getting random cuts on my body, each and every morning. Each one only lasted a few days, and no, I wasn't working on the tree. It was only my dad. But it would be hard to shower because the water made it hurt more. I think I finally found out why that has been happening. One night I woke up to a weird pain on my back. I was laying or lying on my stomach when I woke up and checked the time. 3.46, it said. Ah, just great, I moaned to myself. I turned over, only to see the same demonic figure, but even more warped than ever, standing over me with the claws right where the pain in my back was, and it had the creepiest smile I'd ever seen. The teeth were sharp, they looked as sharp as knives, and each tooth was blood red. Now I wonder what that thing was, and what it wanted from me and what happened in my backyard. Very good. Very good story. Ah, oh, man. <clears throat> I was uh, raised in a Christian household, and I think, if I recall correctly, my family very much did believe in demons. I remember we rented the movie Paranormal Activity, and we all slept in the same bed after that because it scared the bejesus out of each and every one of us. But... I th remember being taught that demons couldn't physically hurt you if you believed or were protected by the blood of Christ. My beliefs have since changed, but we won't get into that. I do think I believe in a spiritual world. Otherwise, I wouldn't be reading these stories like I often do. But I wonder, if these things could hurt you like that, 
like the person in the story claims. Why don't they just go for the kill? And why don't we hear m about more strange deaths? I don't know. Just some food for thought. Thank you, uh, RM Boss Blake, for that story. This one's titled, Lights and a Weird Shape-Shifting Creature, Help, by Pork Chop Baby. Ooh, now I want to pork chop myself. Excuse me. My wife and I make these pork chops with blistered tomatoes. Ever since we got that sponsorship from HelloFresh and they sent us a sample with it, I have, we have been making that ever since. Man, I keep burping because of those s'mores. But uh, HelloFresh has their recipes online. If you wanted to ever make some simple meals that are very tasty from home, I recommend just looking up their little recipe books. But what we make is uh, blistered tomato pork chops. Blistered grape tomatoes. Delish. <clears throat> anyway, uh, not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. Let's move on to the story. I live in the countryside. Me and my brother were walking back home, and it was a few minutes past midnight. There are no houses beside where we live, just fields, bushes, and trees. We were walking, and I felt like something was wrong. I felt as if something was watching us, but I didn't think too much of it. Then we heard a noise, a noise I can't explain. It was nothing I'd ever heard before. My brother said it was a faraway gunshot, and I just believed him. He later said that he just said that to calm me down. We kept walking with the flashlight on, and he put on some music to calm us both down. At one point, I took on my... I looked on my right, and I see this flashlight. Like a person was holding up a flashlight, but you could clearly see there was no one holding it. My brother turned off our flashlight, and we kept looking at it. The light turned into two, and at first it seemed like it was a car which turned towards us. The light went over us like someone was pointing flashlights. We panicked, but didn't move. A few seconds later, the lights disappeared. We started to walk faster towards our house, but coming over the hill, we saw this creature on the left side of the road, just completely still. My brother didn't wear glasses at the time and he said he just saw something like an orb changing shapes. But I was wearing my glasses, and what I saw still makes me want to puke. I saw a luminescent humanoid. It was something I'd never seen before. The thing started changing its forms and became something like a fox going from one side of the road to the other. At this point, we were freaking out. I started to run towards the house as it was just a few meters away, but my brother stopped me to calm me down, as I was so shocked. When this happened, we were in our driveway. I was with my back to it, and he was holding my shoulders, telling me to calm down. But then he looked towards the darkness, and he ran away. I didn't have the gall to look back, so I ran after him, and towards the door. He gave me the key, and I tried to open it with my hands shaking, which was difficult. He said that he had seen that creature standing up now, and that he looked like a man. But it wasn't a man at all. Have you ever had any encounters like this? This happened just last, last night, and I still can't explain what happened. I'm shocked and scared. I would be too, my friend. I've heard that uh, a lot of UFO and alien sightings accompany these supposed uh, skinwalker sightings, these shapeshifter sightings. And that's pretty common for places like... Uh, What's it called? Skinwalker Ranch. You'll see lights in the distance, strange shapes, and then you'll run into something changing shapes, and you just don't want to run into it. I'm getting nervous. <clears throat> this is fun, guys. This is fun. I'm telling uh, campfire stories by myself, and now the campfire is out. Great. Let me just uh, look around. All right, we're good. We're good. I'm alone, I think, except for that, uh, I had to throw the little cushion to this chair on the ground because I spilled coffee on it. And yeah, I'm drinking some Starbucks coffee at 9.30 at night. My, my wife is going to love me. 
Ah, delicious. Okay, so that that would have to be a skinwalker in that story, I would think. I, w I wonder though, what would aliens, UFOs, and skinwalkers have to do with each other, or is it just coincidence? Because the area they're in happens to be a haunted grounds or an important land. Who, who knows? Spiritual land of some sort. Who knows? Thank you very much, Pork Chop Baby, for that story. Ooh, this one's called Alien Creature. And I see paragraphs. Thank you, Derek954, for submitting a story with actual paragraphs. I'm excited. This all took place in central New Jersey, and I'll start off by giving some backstory. When me and my brother were young, we were fascinated by the idea of monsters, creatures, and strange happenings. But, let's see, but aliens by far was our favorite thing to talk about. We'd watch videos of alleged UFO sightings together. We would go outside the backyard and search for UFOs. We even played an alien invasion game where we would roleplay as, al role as aliens and survivors and battle one another. I guess we both just hoped that we would find aliens someday. Little did we know that one day we would. Except it would not be the happy moment we always thought it would be. I'm waiting for that day too, my friend. Full disclosure. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Are you at the point where you believe UFOs? Our actual technology that we don't understand? Or UFO? UFO UFOs are just a human technology that hasn't been declassified. Do you think it's aliens? Do you believe in aliens? Do you think we've been contacted? Just, what do you think? I am hopeful that we have been contacted. But I am still skeptical that that's the case. I, the, the logical side of me says that uh, UFOs are just technology of ours or a different country that has not been de declassified yet. I hope it's ours. If it happens to be technology of humans, then I would not want that in, uh, in enemy's hands, so to say. Okay, back to the story. It began during the summer. Me and my brother would always have our eyes aimed at the sky looking for strange objects and occurrences. I remember the first time I saw a UFO. I was in the house at the time when I heard my brother yelling for me, for me to come outside. I quickly ran to him, and he told me there was a UFO in the sky and pointed at it. I looked up, and I saw it, but I told him it was just one of those reflective balloons, which we see pretty often from time to time. He said, no, it's not, and then told me to look through the telescope. I did as he told me. It was already pointed at the object, and when I peered through the lens... I saw something that shocked me. There was a perfect sphere hovering in the air, surrounded by another object that was shaped like the letter U, which rotated with the sphere inside it. The two parts were not connected, connected. The two parts were not connected to each other, but they moved as one. It looked to be made out of a very reflective metal like aluminum or chromium. It moved and stopped as it pleased, slowly making its way out of our sight. After that, the strangeness continued, and it was more than just UFOs that we began seeing throughout that summer. I just got goosebumps. Partially because of these stories, and partially because I keep hearing things. Okay, so. <clears throat> I could talk all day about the, all the strange things I saw, but I came here to tell the most significant of all these strange events that ended off my summer of weirdness. I was in the living room playing video games on my Xbox 360. One floor, one floor below me, my brother was hanging out with my dad and sisters in the basement. It was dark out and it was getting late, so my brother decided, decided to go upstairs to get some sleep. Rather than taking the indoor staircase, he decided to open the door to the backyard Excuse me. and ascend through the staircase outside. I am upstairs and have no idea that any of this is happening, when all of a sudden I hear a scream that shatters the calm atmosphere. It was my brother. He sounded afraid, and I could hear him running quickly up the stairs and bolt in through the back door. Without closing the door, he then runs to me, jumping onto the couch and tugging onto my shirt, sleeve, as if he wanted my protection. 
I could tell he was terrified, and so was I. I had no idea what was going on, but I felt as if some burglar or deranged man was coming through the door any second now, trying to harm us. I was frozen in fear, but after a while of nothing coming through the door, my parents and siblings began to arrive and see what was going on. Everyone was talking and everyone was confused about what happened. When my brother was asked about what he saw, he said, It was like a little person, or an alien, I don't know. We all went outside and searched the yard for the thing that my brother saw, but we found nothing. My brother did not want to talk about it, uh, talk about it much. When everyone settled down, I came to talk to my brother alone. I knew he, he would be more comfortable speaking with me, and he knew that I was the only one who would believe him. Then he began to tell me what had happened. He was about to go up the stairs. He heard a noise from behind him. Behind him, It was just a soda can rolling, because the wind had blown it over. But something, something to the right caught his attention. When he turned to look, he saw something that was crouching underneath a chair. It was small, maybe three to two feet tall, and it raised its hand to my brother, like when you reach your hand out to try and calm someone down. But despite this potentially friendly gesture, that thing was built like a predator. It had claws on its feet and hands. It stood on two legs. My brother said it was the color of a frozen turkey. Yeah. Ew. Did it also have a texture? Those little bumps on it? Ew. Muscular body, and it had those and had no facial features besides the cross shape indent on its face, which I now realize could have been its mouth. After seeing it, my brother turned around and bolted up the stairs screaming. He said he could see the creature was running away as well. Well, thank God it was running away. I don't want to be eaten by no turkey goober. After he told me that, I was shocked. I couldn't believe I thought that maybe he could have been startled by a raccoon, but his reaction was too real. He screamed and held on to me like he feared for his life, and my brother was not the type to get scared easily. He was a lot braver than me at the time, so I ran out of irrational explanations as to what he could have seen, and accepted the possibility that he could have seen some sort of alien creature or cryptid. When we woke up in the morning, we checked the yard again, and we found footprints. They were similar in shape to a human's, but different, and even when compared to my younger sister's foot, it was still smaller, meaning it could not have been on, been any of ours. Sadly, I didn't think to take a picture of it. Isn't that always the case? That doesn't mean I don't believe these stories, but I am disappointed when you speak of pictures or potential pictures that we just don't get to see or you forgot to take. As for the strange occurrences, they all just kind of stopped after that. We didn't see one strange thing for about two years after the incident. Sometimes I feel that the creature we saw was the only was the one flying those strange aircrafts we saw, and maybe it was looking back at us as well. Maybe it thought that we were calm and enlightened enough to interact with it, which we clearly were not. And after realizing that it probably thought that we, my God, after realizing that it probably thought that we weren't worth the time, it stopped visiting us. But as of, as of recently, I'm starting to see more UFOs and strange sounds in the sky again. So who knows? Maybe this is its second attempt at contact. And if it is, I wonder if we'll be ready this time around. Nice. Very good story. I like that one. Aliens are super spooky. Let me take a swig of this real quick. I remember watching The Fourth Kind... That movie gave me nightmares for days, and I can't remember how, how old I was, but I wasn't a young child, and that crap gave me nightmares. <clears throat> I think it was because at the start of the film, they say it was based on a true story or something like that. But as I got older, I began to realize that a lot of companies take the smallest hint of truth in a story or account, and then they'll just have total liberty with the rest of it to say whatever they want to entertain you. But back then, that was spooky. That was a really haunting movie. It's about some, uh, a group of people interconnected who are all visited by aliens or 
they just, okay. It was about a therapist unlocking the memories of a man who turned out to be abducted. And the alien that was abducting him regularly, I think it was regularly, comes back, and let's just say some crap goes down. But man, I'm getting goosebumps remembering that movie. That's, that's what's so scary about aliens. Because if they're advanced enough to visit us, advanced enough to visit us, and advanced enough to take us and wipe our memories, then there's no way we can hide. There's nothing you can do to protect yourself from aliens. You literally cannot escape a presence as deadly and sophisticated as aliens. So, if you ever find yourself as a victim of abduction, I wish I had advice for you. I would just say, be strong. You'll get through it. And I'm sorry. Man, that's scary. I hope that never happens to me. Do I believe that alien, uh, alien abductions happen? I don't know. I don't know, honestly. We're talking about extremely advanced races. You have to realize how advanced a race has to be to be able to travel the solar system fast enough and efficient enough to get to this other planet where they found intelligent life. But why would they want anything to do with us? Then again, if we were the aliens, if we had discovered intelligent life on a different planet, we would want to study them as well, I'd think. But would, would we really do it in such a controversial way? Who knows? Let's hope, let's hope it's... Let's hope it's just really vivid dreams people are having. Fingers crossed. Goosebumps crossed at this point. Our next, next story is titled, Our Pet Scar. Ooh, that is, a, uh, that is a cursed name for a pet. Unless, of course, he had a scar beforehand. Creepy Story Zai is the sender here. We were leaving the flea market as my little brother Ryan was admiring his new Pokemon cards that our mom had brought for him. Nice, nice kid. Based. Can I say based? I can say based. Me, on the other hand, I had my go-to box of barbecue. Oh, to-go box of barbecue that I was excited to sink my teeth into. Funny how a little switch of words like that take, uh, makes a to-go box of a meal turn into this carrying around long-term barbecue thing you can just dip your hand into and have a bite. Which would be great if you could take a grab bag at Walmart, a long-lasting grab bag of barbecue chicken, and just have a bite of it whenever you feel like it. I'd be, I'd be happy. I would have so many health problems, but I would uh, have a tasty time. Anyway, me on the other hand had my to-go box of barbecue that I was excited to sink my teeth into. Did you two have fun? My mom asked, happily, as she spray-tested her new perfumes. And we smiled and nodded in agreement. Although we weren't as rich as other people in our big town, we were happy for the things we had. And the weekends, our mom would save money out of her paycheck so that we could uh, all spend a day together, either going out to eat or going to the flea market, which was our favorite. As we were closing in our car, as we were closing in our car. I mean, I get the gist of what you're trying to say there. It just sounds funky. We heard someone whisper in a raspy voice, Do you want to buy a dog? We turned only to find an elderly lady sitting down with her head bowed low, looking at what seemed to be a box of furry creatures. Oh my god, I'm getting Gremlins vibes. On closer inspection, we realized they were dogs. Or seemed to be. Something was a little off but I assumed they were some new breed that I had just never seen. Come on, guys. Let's go. My mom demanded as she did not... L My mom demanded as she did not like us talking to strangers. Okay, I'm going to guess where the story goes. This is going to be like that ur urban legend where they buy a rare breed of dog from some person on the street, and they get home and later find out that it's just a, like a hairless naked giant rat or something. Mom, can we please get one, Ryan pleaded. He gave her those puppy dog eyes that always won her over. How much for one, ma'am? My mom asked, expecting it to be more than she could afford. 
Ten dollars, the elderly lady said while smiling with her yellow and rotted teeth. My mom and I stood there in shock, realizing how cheap they were. As Ryan didn't really know how much about Ryan didn't really know much about high and low prices yet, he was only in the first grade. The elderly lady lady analyzed my mom's confused glance. I just want them to have good homes. I don't really care about the money. I've seen people treat them awfully and throw them in the trash like they were nothing. Nothing more than garbage. She stated still with her head bowed low. I'll take one, my mother said. Ryan's face lit up as he realized we were getting a new pet. Which one do you want, honey? My mom asked impatiently. The elderly woman moved the box toward our direction as my mother pulled out a $10 bill and handed it to the elderly woman. Okay, real quick, this mosquito torch is not working. I am being absolutely assaulted by a mosquito just now. It smacked me in the face and then tried to scroll to a different Reddit page. I did not know mosquitoes liked Reddit. My God. Okay, so where were we? Jesus. Mm, Ryan's picking out a pet. <clears throat> Uh, this one, Ryan said, while holding an adorable puppy in his hands. As I looked closer, I noticed that the puppy had what seemed to be a pink uh, scar under his left eye. Aw, poor baby. I pointed it out to Ryan, thinking it was cool. That's the perfect name. How about Scar? Ryan said, as Scar licked his cheek. Please make sure you feed it five times a day the elderly lady said with wide eyes. My mom nervously smiled and thanked the elderly lady before leaving. You better, let's see, you better take good care of him, my mother said to Ryan, and I, <laughs> to Ryan and I, as she gave us a stern look. I will, mommy. Hey, Ben, do you want to hold him? Ryan asked me. Sure, why not? I replied as I grabbed Scar for the first time as we got in the car. Scar was adorable and playful. For, the most, for most of the car ride home, he burrowed himself in my shirt. We made it home, and I brought him into Ryan. Oh, Ryan and I's room, and laid him on Ryan's bed. As I admired him, I quickly realized things about Scar were even more odd. I noticed that instead of four toes on his paw, like every other dog, he had six, along with the insanely sharp claws that burrowed themselves in his skin once he was relaxed. That's very feline-like. I looked at his mouth that was slightly opened as he slept, and I noticed that he did not have teeth but small holes in his gums, where his teeth should be coming from. As I touched his gum, touched his gums for further inspection, his needle-like teeth protruded from the holes in his gums as he snarled, still sound asleep. Oh my goodness. That, uh, that reminds me, I'm getting PTSD from this story in a way you would not expect. I used to clean cars for a living, and for a long time I cleaned alone. So one day, a customer had a car that needed detailed, so I was cleaning it, putting trash from the back of the car into the trash can, like I usually do, and I picked up this plastic object, this used, I thought it was trash, it was trash, okay, it was a used piece of trash, but it was shaped weird, and I noticed that my thumb fit perfectly in it. <laughs> And like the idiot I was. Ooh, what is that? Get out of here, dear. I'm a big scary man beast. Well, I don't feel alone anymore. I don't know if you guys heard those footsteps back to my little tale, but I was uh, picking up this piece of trash, noticing curiously that my thumb fit perfectly in it, and so I shoved it in there, which activated a spring-loaded needle and stabbed my thumb. So for a few days, I thought I may have contracted a disease of some sort. Now I'm just waiting to see if something's walking around out there. Getting goosebumps all over. This was a fun, good, bad idea. 
But anyway, I believe what I actually got or got hurt with in that car was probably some sort of diabetes testing stuff. I hope. <laughs> but don't stick your fingers in strange holes, kids. Okay? Don't do that. Anyway, back to this story before I go mad thinking about what's on the other side of that fence. Ugh, that's creeping me out. Anyway. I ignored it, since I didn't know much about dogs. I left the room and was greeted by my mother, who was leaving for work for the day. All right, you two. I'll be back at around ten. I left a water bowl out for Scar, Scar and Ben kept a close eye. Oh, okay, she's talking. Sorry, I'm being paranoid right now. I left the room and was greeted by my mother, who was leaving for work for the day. She said, All right, you two. I'll be back at around ten. I left a water bowl out for Scar. And Ben, keep a close eye on your brother, she said. She gave us both a kiss on the forehead, and she left. As Scar slept, Ryan and I played video games. We played for hours until Scar woke up. Scar woke up and jumped off Ryan's bed, and instead of landing and walking on all fours, he instead used his hind legs. I stood there in shock as it seemed it was natural for him. Ryan stood there in shock, too. We have to show Mom when she gets home, Ryan shouted excitedly. I agreed. Scar made a cry, and I assumed he was hungry. So I went to the refrigerator, and Scar quickly followed. I opened it up since we did not have any dog food yet. And as I did, Scar jumped up. Scar jumped, and burger patties that were left over from last night's dinner. Wait a minute. I opened it up since we didn't have any dog food yet. And as I did, Scar jumped. Burger patties that were left over from last night's dinner. They must have fallen in the floor, I guess. There's an incomplete sentence here, but I'm guessing that's what happened. I said, Scar, no, don't. Before I, before I could finish, Scar's needle-like teeth and claws protruded from his fur and gums as he easily tore open the plastic and devoured the beef patties. Okay, so he's still holding the beef patties. There were only four in there that were for Ryan and I, but I guess a PB&J would also work. Bad boy, I said sternly. Scar sat down and looked up at me with puppy dog eyes that made me feel bad. Well, you're just a puppy, I said. I grabbed some water and poured it into his bowl and as he happily licked away. Distant, uh, motorcycle, I guess, driving by. I'm waiting for the uh, coyotes to go mad. Some nights they do, sometimes. Some nights they don't. I wonder if it's a moon thing. Because I don't see much of a moon tonight. I don't want to turn around all the way, though. Because uh, it might mess up the mic. Yeah, there's a moon. I just don't know how full it is. But if I had heard coyotes just bellowing all night, I'd probably be, in, probably be inside right now. Anyway. Uh, I walked back into my room, only to find Ryan sleeping on the bed. I laughed a little. I went back to playing my game, but I heard growling and snarling that sounded like a huge beast in the kitchen. I grabbed a baseball bat that Ryan had next to his... baseball... gear. Okay, there we go. But as I grabbed it, the sounds stopped. I slowly walked into the kitchen, only, only to find that the mutilated remains of a cat and all of our bologna, salami, and frozen ground beef scattered across the kitchen floor, while slowly being drenched in the cat's blood. Ooh, this story just got really disgusting. I then realized that our side door was wide open, with a trail of blood coming from the outside. Dang it, stray dogs, I yelled assuming that we had accidentally left the side door cracked open, and a stray dog lurked his way into the house and ransacked our fridge, leaving a huge, disgusting gift. Well, not huge. There was no huge in there. Just a disgusting gift. Now I have to clean this crap up, I yelled. <clears throat> I closed the door, and as I turned back around, I noticed Scar hiding under the chairs. I must have scared him with my yelling, I thought. It's okay, come here, buddy, I said, as Scar quickly scurried it toward me on his hind legs. I quickly noticed that Scar was covered in meat and blood. I assumed the dog had attacked him, too, after he tried scaring it away, which, he is, which was why he was hiding. Oh, let's go get you cleaned up. I brought him in, into our bathroom and made some warm bath water before putting Scar in. 
I made sure it was low enough that he didn't drown as I watched him, also looking for wounds, only to realize that he didn't have any. I ran to go clean the mess up outside and in the kitchen as Scar soaked in the tub. Okay, don't leave your puppy in the tub, guys. Never leave a puppo in the tub. After 20 minutes, I ran back into the bathroom, but to my surprise, I found that the bath water was gone, although the stopper was still inside. Scar sat there soaked in water while looking at me with his head cocked to the side. I shook my head, not giving it further thought, as I grabbed a towel and dried Scar. My mother came home shortly after, and I informed her of what happened. Next time, make sure all the doors are closed, she said sternly. I agreed. Scar laid on the living room floor as he slowly dozed off. I picked him up and walked back into my room to go to sleep after that. I put Scar on the end of Ryan's bed as he still slept peacefully. Then I got in my bed and eventually dozed off. I slept peacefully until I was interrupted by an agonizing scream and then a loud crunch and snap. I thought I was having a nightmare until I followed the scream and I was met by my mom who was looking outside her living room window which let us see some parts of the neighborhood. Oh my god, what is that? She softly whispered in horror. I ran to the window and accidentally startled, startled her. Jeez, don't scare me like that, she said, relieved. She then pointed as she shivered in horror. I looked through the window and almost soiled myself as I saw a huge and beastly creature going door to door ripping people to shreds as body parts flew across the streets and blood sprayed onto the windows. Nice. <laughs> Alright, this is obviously, <clears throat> very obviously a creepypasta. If it is not, then I pray for anyone who comes across this mad beast straight from hell itself. Speaking of hell, the story goes on, it was literal hell. I was quickly broken out of my trance as, the man's, as a man's decapitated head flew through our window, striking me in the shoulder glass falling onto the floor. Excuse me. The creature turned toward our direction with its glowing red eyes, and under its left eye there was a pink scar, the same pink scar that Scar had. My, re my realization was confirmed once I ran into the room and saw that Scar was nowhere to be found, and Ryan was still sleeping peacefully. I was surprised he didn't wake up from all the screaming and commotion. My mom came running into our room as she slammed and locked the door. Our house is next, mom said in tears. Ryan finally woke up as my mother hugged us tightly. I love you, she said, trying to smile. Before I could answer, I started thinking about the elderly lady and how we should have never brought Scar, or whatever that thing was, home. But one thing hit me as hard as I thought about it, and I realized that this was all my fault. I recalled that the last thing the elderly said was, the elderly lady said was, please make sure you feed it five times a day. Our front door creaked open, and there were then heavy footsteps and growling. My mother started pounding so hard to the, my heart, not, not the mother, wow, <clears throat> I've never suffered from a pounding mother. My heart started pounding so hard to the point that my head began pounding. I felt my mom and Ryan shaking as we hugged each other tightly as Ryan was still asking us what was going on. The steps got closer to our door, and then they stopped, and the locked door somehow creaked open as my mother's eyes widened in disbelief. How did it open the door? She whispered shakingly. I was accepting my fate, expecting to see that beastly creature walk in, but to our surprise, a small furry creature walked back in the house. Scar... Scar jumped on the bed and slowly burrowed himself into my shirt like nothing happened at all. The thing that scared me the most is not that I now know what Scar is, and it's not a dog, or that he slaughtered every single neighbor we had. It's the fact that we, know, we have no idea what this thing is. Okay, for a story that I do not believe is true, or allegedly true, it is a really good idea for a creepypasta. It's got that uh, campiness, that old, really super popular creepypasta used to have. But with a, <clears throat> enough creepiness to it, that if uh, you added on to it, or changed up a few things here and there, it would, be, it would be really good. I was hoping there would be more of a twist. But that thing just, mm, it just got right to tearing people up and throwing heads around. 
like the uh, werewolves from Dog Soldiers. That just means it means business, though. I can respect that. Mean in business. Okay, <clears throat> so that's plenty of stories for the night. I'm sitting here, and my uh, left butt cheek is really hurting, because there's apparently a metal bar on this bench, this chair thing. And since there's no cushion, it's all on my tush. And after hearing those footsteps over there, that never uh, sounded again, so whatever's out there may be just standing on the other side of the road, it sounded like, waiting for me to go back in, I might just go ahead and do that. But it was fun reading these stories by a dead campfire now, in the middle of the night, in the woods, in my yard. Thanks for listening, guys. If you want more of this, leave a comment below telling me what you think. Uh, I'll be probably be adding the other half of this, which was me walking and telling some stories from the other day. I, want, I can't add the whole thing of that one because the audio got messed up at the end for some reason. But I'll probably tack that on there too for one big, long episode. Anyways, until next time, stay safe out there and stay creepy. Because this world is a strange one. Hello everyone, darkness prevails here. I just wanted to do something a little different. Got myself a little fancy handheld recorder and a uh, lavalier mic, and I'm walking through the woods next to my house. So the goal of this, uh, there are multiple, goal, multiple goals, <clears throat> one of which is uh, getting some steps in so I can stop being so fat all the time. Uh, another goal would be to try to scare myself. Maybe I can start doing some walking at night. Sounds like fun. Hope I don't get eaten. It's not night just yet, though. But still, that would be a lot of fun. And another thing would be just to do something different. Well, I've got a little story that I figured would be appropriate for a walk in the woods. And it's titled, The Haunted Forest Behind Dan's Building. It was submitted to my subreddit, and it was submitted by WebD1985. This will be a little bit different. The noises around me might be a little ASMR for you, a little relaxing. And I'll be pausing to take breaths because uh, I'm so fat and out of shape. <laughs> Sorry, I keep saying that. I am out of shape, and I am not proud of it. <clears throat> But I might discuss a few parts here and there if I think they're interesting. React to it. There will be more reactions to this story than just simply narrating it. If I, if I feel I need to react to a part. But anyway. Here's the haunted forest behind Dan's building. For a little backstory, Daniel was my childhood best friend from my neighborhood. And he lived in the building next to mine in the year 1993, if I remember correctly. But we all called him Dan for short. This is his story, and he swears it's... <clears throat> excuse me. He swears it's totally true. Since Dan was eight or nine years old, his mother, his stepfather, and him moved to a small neighborhood in a city in South America. It's located in a valley, and it's surrounded by a big mountain on all sides. The neighborhood was on the east side of the city on a dead-end street of a closed neighborhood, but there were a lot of green areas all around it, such as small hills with big and small trees, plants, flowers, grass, two parks, and a sports court. Ugh, narrating and uh, trying to walk. <sighs> kind of feel winded already. Just try it yourself. Anyway. <clears throat> When Dan and his family moved to the neighborhood, he was very happy because when they were getting there in his mom's car, he could see a lot of places where he could play. So as a kid, that was very exciting for him. Even though the hills, woods, and plants that surrounded Dan's new neighborhood looked really nice during the day and while the sun was up, they looked very dark. <clears throat> very dark and creepy at night, and he thought they were really scary. He felt an ominous presence from those woods at night. 
At that age, Dan was afraid of many things. The dark, the woods, wolves, black dogs and cats, spiders, sharks, you name it. Well, I'm scared of all those things too, I don't blame you. Just like me, he was scared of those as well. Okay, that was part of the story. This was because he was a total mama's boy at five years old, and for most of his life. I'm a, I'm a mama's boy too. When Dan and I met for the first time, we were both playing in the park while our babysitters were watching us and talking to each other. Uh, the babysitters were talking to each other. We immediately bonded. Oh, I think I screwed that up. Let me try again. When Dan and I met for the first time, we were both playing in the park while our babysitters were watching us and talking to each other. We immediately bonded and became friends. We had a lot of things in common. We started talking about our favorite TV shows and movies. Star Wars, Dragon Ball Z, totally awesome. The X-Men are <clears throat> the X-Men cartoons and Ninja Turtles, among many other things. So we used to play by pretending we were superheroes or some other cartoon character while running around, using the merry-go-round, the slides, the swings, and funny enough, we both had plastic lightsabers. I can't tell you how many times I have hurt my fingers sword fighting with another child when I was a kid with those plastic lightsabers. But uh, let me get a shout out for green team. Green lightsabers were the best, but Mace Window had a pretty nice purple. Okay, anyway, we fought as if we were Jedis or Ninja Turtles, but we never stayed in the park once the sun went down, either because our sitters did not let us or we were scared of the woods around it. However, Dan was not my only friend in the neighborhood. I introduced, <clears throat> I introduced him to my other friends who lived in my building. Other buildings and houses, their names were the following. Eliza, Diego, JP, Mike, Laura, and Gerard. All of us were around the same age. We got ourselves a cast of characters. Let's hope they all, let's hope they all uh, come into play. We all became great friends as the months went by because almost every afternoon we played sports, played in the park, trick-or-treated, had water balloon fights, played Nintendo together, climbed the hills and woods behind our buildings during the day, and did everything together. That was a long sentence. <laughs> Sorry. All right, on to the story. <clears throat> the neighborhood kids liked to joke around by saying that the woods behind the buildings were haunted. At that time, we played hide-and-seek or cops and robbers, so we'd run around the street until 7 p.m. because that was our curfew, and we had to do our boring homework. But Dan and I went to bed late at night in a secret, <clears throat> in secret, while we, <clears throat> while we talked quietly on the phone. That night, it was like 9 or 10 p.m., I think, and Dan asked me the following. Did you watch X-Men today? Yeah, dude, of course. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Did you see the fight against Apocalypse and the Four Horsemen? Yeah, dude, that fight... <clears throat> yeah, dude, that fight was awesome. I loved it. But talking about something else, have you heard some creepy noises be... Have you heard some creepy noises behind your building at night? No. I'm a deep sleeper, so I usually black out everything around me. Wow, I wish I were that lucky. I usually... <clears throat> I can usually hear footsteps in those woods at night, and I also sleep, and I also sleepwalk sometimes. Well, I think it's time for me to go to sleep. See you tomorrow, dude, and take care. Sure thing, man. Talk tomorrow, and take care too. Dan hung up his favorite hamburger-shaped phone, sat down in bed, grabbed an old fantasy book about dragons that was on the nightstand, and started reading until he began to close his eyes and doze off. He fell into a deep slumber. He was now dreaming, or so he thought. In his dream, Dan could hear the crickets in the forest, but was awakened by some strange steps walking around the forest and the leaves crunching beneath him, or it. <sighs> Creepy. It's pretty nice out today. But even on a nice day like this, I'd hate to hear those footsteps somewhere in the distance following me. Come on, story, scare me. I would love to be scared. 
as if some person or animal was walking in the woods. There were a lot of cats in the neighborhood, so he thought it was one of those. A cat or a possum or maybe an owl. An owl? Oh, okay. All of a sudden, we heard a... All of a sudden, he heard a low whisper that beckoned him and said, Daniel, it's Professor X. The X-Men need your help. Come to the woods. Help us. <laughs> That's awesome and creepy. Usually when we, uh, when I read these stories about skinwalkers and such, and they mimic your voice, it's usually someone you care about in the family, but darned if I wouldn't come to uh, Professor X to save the day. <laughs> anyway, let's see. This strange but yet familiar voice was very similar to the professor's voice from his favorite, favorite cartoon, and it sounded like it was right outside the window. He was a naive and innocent child, so he decided to get out of bed, put on his jacket and boots, to <clears throat> take his glasses, get out of the apartment, and went to the ground floor. Oh man, how many steps have I done now? Quit complaining, keep moving, tubby. Gotta motivate myself. Gosh. If you're wondering, I weigh about 185 last I checked. And being a manlet at 5 foot 8, that's pretty heavy for my size, I think. Okay, so. I'll stand here and take a little bit of a break so I can catch my breath. Whew. Once he was on the ground floor, he walked to his building's parking lot. He felt a little cold, so he rubbed his shoulders with his hands. The voice kept calling out to him. Help the X-Men, Dan. Somehow, he felt extremely attracted to this voice, like a metal to a magnet, because he could not get it out of his head. He took a small leap to get on top of a hill, a small hill. He felt, <clears throat> he felt very scared, but kept walking into the dark and creepy woods. And while he was walking, he heard other footsteps and leaves crunching besides his. He felt like these steps were approaching his position. In that moment, he stopped walking so he could hear the steps more clearly. Since he thought it was some crazy person or animal that was insane enough to walk in the woods in the middle of the night. There's a lot of cats in our neighborhood. So Dan thought it was one of those cats. Maybe a possum or an owl. But then he heard a noise that sounded like a roar. That, that sometimes, that often gets to me. <clears throat> I remember being really creeped out as a kid watching, uh, what was it? Haunting? That movie where they're all staying in a mansion. It's got Liam Neeson in it. There was a scene where the main character lady is running through the hallway from an invisible force that sounds like a giant lion. I remember it roaring like a lion, I think. I could be remembering this wrong, but if I remember correctly, that like scarred me. And ever since then, every time they use a lion roar in a film to make it creepy and powerful, it worked. It worked on me. I'd poo my little pants. Same thing happened in a Paranormal Activity. I think the first one. Uh, there was a scene where the lady was either getting dragged off or she throws the man at the camera. My memory is bad, so if I'm getting this wrong, feel free to call me out. But anyway, there was a lion roar type of sound effect in that. And that, just that sound got to me really good. Makes me think. My fear of uh, werewolves and my fear of that sound. Maybe, just maybe, my ancestors were eaten by lions and wolves quite a bit. All right, let's see. Back to the story. He thought it sounded very similar to the sounds the dinosaurs made in that movie, Jurassic Park. He had seen, the, seen it in the theater a few, a few weeks before, and the fast steps from someone or something running in his direction. Looks like we got a jet. I'll wait for that to pass. I heard a conspiracy the other day. 
it made me laugh, but people believe strange things. I'm not going to judge them. But they said when uh, man started to fly at speeds like that, as a plane, not a jet, by the way, in my bed, that it uh, corrupts their souls and that men were never supposed to fly that fast or go that fast. Well, why, why would that affect your soul, though? Strange. That's weird, but a topic for another day, I guess. <clears throat> so. All right, where were we? Suddenly, Dan broke out of his trance. He looked around, and his little kid's mind felt so terrified that he passed out, and fortunately, when he fell to the ground, his body was positioned between a tall tree and a large boulder, so he barely heard how his this trickster creature ran next to him. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, I'm getting a little bit on edge. I heard something behind me, and it definitely raised the uh, hairs on the back of my neck. I think it was just a chipmunk dropping something. Or my imagination. <clears throat> so, thanks for this story. It actually worked. <sighs> Creeping me out. Okay, so... This trickster creature ran next to him, circled his location, while it smelled the air in order to get his scent. But he guessed it decided to leave at some point. Ben assumed he had passed out for several hours because he woke up by the sound of a woodpecker, cicadas, or cicadas, and birds that were on a nearby tree. The heat and glare from the sun on his face, he rubbed his eyes, opened them, looked all around him, and he was in shock and horrified when he looked at the Spider-Man watch and saw that it was 6 a.m. Dan had woke up in the middle of a forest. That's scary, too. What would you do if you woke up in the middle of the woods? What would be your first thought? I read a book based on a very popular Reddit series, Pin Pal. Highly recommend that story. Uh, and in that, I think the very first scene, the main character is a kid and just wakes up at night in the middle of the woods. My first assumption would be hopefully I, I was sleepwalking. But in this case, I think, I, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it was something else that caused him to be out in the middle of the woods. And that is the stuff of nightmares, honestly. If it was another force taking you from your slumber and putting you somewhere you don't know where you're at, just ugh. The thought of that really gets to me. He thought he was going to wake up in his bed because he was dreaming, but he had sleepwalked inside the forest in order to follow that beckoning voice. He saw how his clothes were full of fallen leaves, so Dan quickly stood up, brushed the leaves, <clears throat> brushed the leaves from his arms and legs, and ran away from that creepy forest, which looked normal during the day. Excuse me. He climbed down the forest until he got to the parking lot. He ran to his building's door, opened it, and ran into the elevator. He saw himself in the mirror and could not believe what had happened to him. Dan got to his apartment door. He opened the door silently, tiptoeing inside his apartment's hallway, and saw that thankfully his mother had not awakened yet, since she would never believe what had happened. Dan went to bed and stared at the ceiling, trying to process what had occurred last night. Now he completely believed his parents when they told him not to talk or listen to strangers, especially if they're in the middle of a dark and creepy forest. So, Dan had so many questions and thoughts to himself. How did such a creature imitate Professor X's voice? How did it know I would listen to it, or he would listen to it? How did it know he loved the X-Men cartoon? <laughs> okay, let's see. Maybe he would never find out, or maybe he would, but who knows. Sorry about that. They had a bit of a perspective change, or maybe I'm just confused. That was a good story. Anything that mimics, mimics human voices, that's a spooky story. In my opinion, anyway. I'm not sure if I believe in skinwalkers myself. 
I don't know if I should be even saying that word because when I do, when I have talked to uh, those in with, with Native American backgrounds, they tell you that even the word skinwalker, let alone their physical, their not physical but actual name that they are called, ye na blushii. I think I'm saying that right. It attracts their presence to you. And I don't know about you, but uh, having a skinwalker on my tail does not sound like a great time. Besides being a little creeped out and on edge from that, and it's not even sundown yet, I'm sitting here waiting to have that awkward run-in with a stranger. We live out in the woods, but uh, there's still some kind of paved roads surrounded by forest, and I'm walking up and down those a little bit too. Usually people walk their dogs up and down here, but imagine how awkward that would be, running into someone, wearing headphones, looking at their phone, and they have this recording device hanging out of their pocket, and they're talking to themselves. Now that's a scary story. Maybe one day I'll be the antagonist to a scary story one day. Alright, well that was a fun story. Thanks, Wept the 1985. If you guys have any stories like that you want me to read, send it to me at Darkness Prevails. No, not Darkness Prevails. My gosh. I'm out of breath and I'm out of brain power. Go to reddit.com slash r slash darkness prevails. But I don't feel like I'm done just yet. I'm going to look at some other submissions on my subreddit. want to make this one a long one. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. Be cool if I could, uh, stay out here talking to myself like a freak till after dark. Let's see, the Haunted Cemetery? How long is that one? It's a quick one, I'll read it anyway. This one's the Haunted Cemetery from uh, Gold Angel 1119. This story took place when I was in middle school. I was about 13 years old, and I was walking to the public bus stop. So school ended early this day of the week, around 1 p.m., and I was walking with friends, and we decided to walk through the cemetery. Not sure why. That's always a, <clears throat> a sketchy idea. Let's see what happens. Anyways, we were walking through when we all heard a chainsaw out of nowhere. We all looked over to where it was coming from. My friends and I noticed that we couldn't see anyone in the cemetery, so that was strange. I would be thankful that you don't see someone chasing you with a chainsaw in the cemetery if that's what you heard. My god. Being chainsawed to death. Now, let's, let's talk about that. That would be a painful way to go, okay? I've heard about the, uh, the videos you can find online of that happening to people, but I do not have the gall to uh, see that myself, so no thanks. We were talking about souls before. If something corrupted your soul, it would be watching those types of videos. My friends and I noticed that we couldn't see anyone in the cemetery, so that it was strange. Then I kept on looking when I saw the noise it was coming from this small white house with chains. The chains were shaking like crazy, like someone or something wanting to get out from, the, from inside the tiny white house in the cemetery. <sighs> okay, so... Are the chains on the house? Or leading into it. Still sounds creepy. It reminds me of a, one of those scenes from a cartoon where you see the doghouse and you see a big thick chain going into the shadows of the doghouse. You don't see the dog, but the rattling chain tells you there's something big in there. Anyway, let's see. The chainsaw noise kept coming from the tiny white house with chains shaking and wouldn't stop, so we all ran to the end of the cemetery, and we couldn't go through the cemetery again. End of story. Quick and pretty eerie. I think I could actually believe that. Would that be a ghost story? You said it was a haunted cemetery, so you believe it may be maybe paranormal? Let's hope that's the case, and it's not some psycho in there. Cutting something up. Okay, someone comments on the story. Cult Beer says, The chain is designed to keep evil from getting out. Alicia87M says, How do you know that? K 
Care to give more details? Ah, they don't reply. Oh, they do reply. Maybe. Let me see. Nah, they don't reply. I would also like to know, called beer, what you're talking about and how you would know that. Well then, what else we got? Maybe next time I do this, I should have more prepared. Also, I uh, called myself a manlet earlier. That's just a joke. If you are, it doesn't matter what height you are, you are a beautiful person, okay? I think I'm gorgeous. Something, that's a, that's a sentence right there. You don't want to hear from someone talking to themselves on the side of the road. <laughs> All right, let's see. This one's titled, this one is simply titled uh, Banshee. Wait, this sounds familiar. Okay, so. Banshee from Black Cat 1206. My grandma was from Ireland. She told me and my cousins scary bedtime stories about the Banshee. She, would, she once told us that when she was 13, she was running an errand for her mom with her sister Mary. They had to go through a wooded area to get to the next small town, which was their destination. There was a small stream there where the kids used to fish and play. They were approaching the stream, and from a little distance, Mary said to Gran, What's that, Annie? They both stopped and looked, beside the stream with her back to them. <clears throat> Sorry, my bad. <sighs> Read that wrong. Beside the stream with her back to them was a figure of a woman. She had long dark hair and wore a light-colored dress, and her feet were bare. They were silent, so they could hear soft, gentle weeping. Ooh, creepy. Spooky. Don't approach the strange, crying woman that's barefoot in the middle of the woods by the stream. She is barefoot, right? Yes, barefoot. Okay. Without waiting another minute, my gran said her and Mary turned and ran to the other way as fast as they could. Ran the other way in my bed. When they got home, they told their dada about their adventure. Dada? Their mum weren't too happy that they returned without completing the errand. Their dada said, he, said it was probably the banshee. Their mum just rolled their, her eyes and bumbled something under her breath. The next day, a younger child that the family knew was found face down in the stream in the same place as they saw the woman. Oh, okay. Okay, this story got me. Why did it have to be the same place? The lack of oxygen I'm intaking as I narrate these and walk is getting to me. Going on to finish this. It is said that the Banshee shows up just before a tragedy or death. That, I like that story, short and sweet. I wonder how many other cultures and mythologies have a creature like a Banshee, just something that signals that something bad is about to happen, specifically death. I've always loved Banshees. I think uh, my first experience with them was uh, in the Vel Van Helsing PS2 game, based on the movie. There was a part in the woods, snowy woods I think, where some Banshees scream at you. I just thought that was so cool. But looking up the legends, I first found like the vast mythology that Ireland have about fey folk and such. And banshees, while they, I don't think they ever mean harm, they're definitely something you don't want to run up or run in on, you know? I'm an extremely anxious person. So imagine me running into a banshee. That would mean two things for me. One, spooky ghost lady, I don't like he. And two, oh god, who's dying? I can't handle that waiting to see the bad thing that's going to happen, and I know it's going to happen thing. Like when you're younger, and you get in trouble at school, and you're on the phone with your dad or mom because the school made you call them, and they're like, you're in trouble when you get home. And you just sit in school for the rest of the several hours, and then ride the bus all the way home, and you can't stop thinking, oh God, what are they going to do to me? <clears throat> no, I wasn't abused, that's not what I'm saying. But as a, as a kid, even a grounding was terrifying, right? You don't want your Game Boy taken away. You had to finish Pokemon Yellow. Best Pokemon game right there. 
well, Emerald was pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Continuing on, let's do some more stories. Oh, a camp horror story at a northern Pennsylvania Boy Scout camp. If someone doesn't put a bench out here for me to sit on sometime, I'm going to have to buy one myself. Oh, okay. A quick visualization of what I'm walking through right now. A bunch of tall as heck pine trees. And there's this massive, like the most massive tree in the woods out here was uprooted and just left here. It doesn't look so much like someone, a person uprooted it. It just looks like it was yanked out and left to rot. It's pretty spooky to look at all the roots tangled up and reaching out to you. Anyway, so this one was submitted by DJ RUSZ. This happened about three years ago from now. It was my first time going to a camp without my troop. I went here for a NYLT camp, which for those not in the Boy Scouts stands for National Youth Leadership Training. I set my camp up just outside some woods in a small clearing with a different troop, setting up just at the side of my camp. The camp was a week long. It started off normally, other than the all-day rainstorms. Oh, I wish it rained right now. Uh, let's see, where was I? Until about four days in, I had a f until about four days in, I had a hard time falling asleep as it poured rain all night. That night, in the sounds of the rain, I could hear a quiet but loud grunt. At first, I put it off as a deer, but it got louder and louder, slowly getting closer to my tent. Please be a deer! Oh my God! Please be a deer grunting. We're a very angry and random uncle who's also as out of breath as I am. Then I thought a bear, it could be a bear, that had wandered into the camp, but the grunts stayed at one volume. They stopped getting louder, so whatever it was stopped moving, and the sounds were directly in front of my tent. I had no watch, no phone, no way to get help, but after what seemed like two hours, the grunts got quieter, and eventually they disappeared. But after they disappeared, I heard the sound of rocks getting chucked into the woods. Oh, I know where this is going. I figured they had fallen from a hill because the rain had loosened them up. But I came to the realiz realization my camp was in the valley and not close to the hills surrounding it. There was no creek or source of rocks nearby, so where did they come from? For what seemed like hours, I heard a rock one at a time getting chucked into the woods creating a small thump. Then I passed out. The next day, I asked the nearby camp to mine if they had seen or heard anything or anyone of the kids. Wait, okay, that's a confusing sentence. Let me try that again. Next day, I asked the nearby camp to mine if they had seen or heard anything. Period. Should be there. One of the kids said he hadn't slept last night because the storm was too loud and hadn't heard a thing. And this would seem normal. They, might not, they may not have heard, but their camp was five feet from mine, so how did they not hear it? I ended up checking the surrounding woods to find no one where to finding nowhere to get small rocks that would make the familiar thump. No fallen trees, no animal prints, which you would have seen because the ground was very muddy. There were no prints at all anywhere. To this day I don't know what it was, but thinking back I wonder what would have happened if I would have gone outside my tent that night. I would have loved to have had you go outside the tent, if you would have been safe, obviously, you don't want to wish any danger on you, but I'd love to hear a story of someone who goes outside the tent at the worst possible time to see and encounter head-to-head -head this strange grunting beast, this grunting uncle, the grunkle, some call it. In my opinion, if it is a cryptid of some sort, it's probably a Bigfoot. They'd love to chuck them rocks. Okay, we got some comments. Quetzal says, good thing you didn't leave your tent that night. Shadowbob1234 says, I'm guessing it was a Bigfoot, honestly, just snooping around. Most Bigfoot are docile. They don't want to be around people. They sometimes go into camps looking for food. He must have been curious, and since everyone was asleep, he decided to go look around. 
just let it be and you're fine. Hungry, hungry Bigfoots. Big feet. What? Okay, guys, what would it be? Big feet or big foot? Riddle me that. Big foots. Big foots, I mean. I think Bigfoot sounds way cuter, and I, for one, want to sign a petition stating that the plural form of Bigfoot should permanently be Bigfoots. Anyway, thank you for that story, DJ RUSC. Thank you, uh, American Infrastructure, for having planes over me all the time. Can't live without that ruckus. I've never flown before, if you were wondering. I want to. I'd love to visit some places in Europe. <clears throat> Eventually check out Japan someday. A friend of mine from Sweden, Limbo, she calls herself. She's the girl that uh, sent me a bunch of candy not too long ago. She lives in Sweden and sent me uh, a couple of books on mythological creatures, Norse creatures and stuff. That was amazing. Coolest thing I've received from a fan. But the, the books are just encyclopedias full of different creatures. There's like non-stop things for people to be afraid of in these uh, Norse countries. But I definitely want to visit. I hear, uh, I was told Sweden has a law where you can just camp on any natural land. They just ask you, uh, camp up, you not camp up, pick up after yourself when you're done. That would be cool. So cool. There's something about being in America and walking through the woods. You just want to plop down and set up a little campsite in these really nice and serene spots. But you can't a lot of the time. It's either trespassing or someone's going to bother or heckle, heckle you. I don't know if I told you the story before. I think I tweeted about it or posted on the community tab on YouTube. But I used to walk outside my house after dark and listen to scary stories while getting some steps in to exercise. One night, the next door neighbor called the cops on me because he didn't know I lived there. So I got the cops called on me for walking in front of my house back and forth with headphones on. Luckily, the cops, they weren't having it. They uh, just asked me what was up. I told him I lived there and I just like to exercise, but when it gets dark and I'm listening to spooky stuff, I don't like to wander too far from home. That's, that's the honest to God truth, too. So they just uh, left, left me there being all afraid and wondering what the heck, why did someone call the cops on me? Great stuff, great stuff. Ah, there's a log over there. Maybe I should sit on it. So I was, uh, this is going to be a random topic. But we were walking on the same road uh, with our dog, Maple. She's a little corgi. Sweet as can be. But we walked past other people's dog poop. Very nice. But it was in a coil, like, like in the drawings and those emojis. And I wondered, what is the deciding factor in the shape of a dog's uh, outcome? Because for your information, our dogs lay logs. They do not lay coils. And then when I talked about that to my wife as we walked the dog, I could see it in Maple's face that she felt guilty and pressured to lay a coil, but she could not. But seriously, why? I, I, it's, it's just a stupid question. I'm gonna move on from that. What other stories do we have? Man, I've read four, let's see. Read the cemetery one, the camp story, the haunted forest behind Dan's house, and Banshee. Yeah, okay, let's go to this log. Right next to the woods. If I get bitten by a snake, I have only myself to blame. Man, it is nice out here. Moving out here was the right decision. It's cheaper and prettier. The man from the burnt house, my great-grandmother, was it a song or a ghost? Ooh. Oh, I read that one. Okay. I was looking at one called The Runner. That one was uh, titled, Just Clickbaity Enough for Me to Want to Read It Again. This one's titled simply, well, let's click it first to make sure it's not some troll. 
because their uh, username is really nasty. This one's titled, Was It a Wendigo? And it's from a user titled, I blank parrots 247 and the blank would be the uh, word uh, adults use that rhymes with luck. And I really hope you don't do that to parrots. He says, I'm a 14-year-old guy from Western North Carolina. This story takes place near Rowan Mountain, Tennessee. In December 2019, I believe I saw a Wendigo watching me. It all started late night a week before Christmas. I was sitting on my porch waiting for my mom to come stargazing with me. Yeah, I know it's odd, but it's something that my mother and I have always enjoyed doing. She was in her bedroom, which was adjacent to the porch, and she was getting dressed. I was sitting on the porch, waiting for her at around 10 o'clock at night. I heard some rustling by a large bush and looked over. There I saw two huge red eyes around four feet from the ground. I was staring at those eyes for what felt like an eternity, but it was only around two minutes. Then, all of a sudden, those eyes began to rise, and I realized that it wasn't something small, but something huge. It walked out of the bush, and it seemed to be seven feet tall. I'm around five foot ten, and I had to look up to it from about twenty-five feet away. It had pale skin, large claws, matted black hair in patches, and it was staring at me. Then it let out a low growl and took three steps towards me. I'm not sure if it was a he or she, because it had no parts, but it was built like a human man. I felt nothing but fear in that moment. For some unknown reason, it just turned away and walked into the opposite direction, like nothing had happened. It was just going back home or to the store or something else mundane. That's what it acted like. Then it walked behind my great uncle's barn and disappeared. Sorry for the noise. Don't know if the, if the mic is picking that up, but there's a... Uh, Sounds like there's some people racing on the distant highway out there. The next day I went to where it was, and where the footprints were. I found them, and they were bigger than my hand. They just stopped at the barn. I still sit out on the porch at night from time to time, but I haven't seen anything like it since. Well, maybe it's in the barn. That would be scary. I'd always heard of the Wendigo coming from Cherokee descent although I never thought I would see one for myself. If you're ever near Rowan Mountain, Tennessee, be wary of what's in those woods, because you never know what you may see. Why did they end at the barn? <laughs> that really does creep me out. That, they, that thing could be in the barn, just living there. Man, that would be, ooh, that would be awful. Have you heard of the, uh, the people who have, uh, they put cameras in their houses because they had crap missing from their home. And they thought someone was breaking in, of course. I would think that, too. But the cameras ended up showing someone was living in their cabinet or in their attic. And they would just crawl out in the middle of the night, grab what they wanted to eat, and then crawl, bla crawl back into the cab cabinet. That's already scary enough. But imagine a Wendigo crawled out of that cabinet while you were sleeping. And maybe it nibbled on your toes took a few chunks out, something like that. That's pretty scary. That, that was a good story. Someone comments, Kyle Free 151 comments, carry a bag of ash from an indoor fireplace mixed with salt, sage, and lavender for, prote for protection from them. Uh, the author asks, thank you very much, but does it have to be a leather bag? Kyle Free 151 responds, no problem. And no, the bag does not have to be leather. Uh, Gold Angel 1119 asks, or says, my bad. Hey, yeah, it does sound like a Wendigo. I'm sure you were curious, but hey. Hey, okay, let's see. But hey, scared because you've heard stories, but didn't think it was real since you didn't see it before. I think they mean you were scared because you've heard stories, but didn't think it was real since you didn't see one before. I had an encounter with a werewolf years ago, December 2018, so I know how scared you must have felt yet curious and alert during the experience. My experience was at night, in the early hours in the morning. Thank God it didn't bother you, and you haven't seen it again. Maybe it was just a warning or something. Now maybe my experience, who knows, I just... Okay. I can't understand this comment, sorry. Trying to read it. It just says, now my experience, who knows, 
I just thank God I'm alive and I wasn't eaten that night early morning. Not getting devoured is always a great way to uh, wake up in the morning. Oh, the same user comments again, goldangel1119. Maybe carding sage or something could help you, or if you're part Native American, maybe you can talk to a chief about it and see if they can protect you or use herbs or something to help you. Maybe. Just an idea. Native American folklore is so good. So good. I wish we heard and knew more about it. I still want to make a video uh, about Wendigo versus Skinwalker eventually. I think a lot of people get those mixed up, and I think it would be the most respectful thing to do uh, to clear that up. I mean, I definitely haven't uh, helped when I usually make, usually when I make videos or episodes on Skinwalkers and Wendigo. I go by what the person submitting the stories says it is. So if the video sounds like a Skinwalker, but they call it a Wendigo, I'll just say it's a Wendigo for the sake of the author. But that doesn't really do the folklore justice, and I kind of feel bad for that. And I want to clear the air. I want everyone to know from the legends what the Wendigo versus Skinwalker, what the facts are, you know. So, <clears throat> we don't know a whole lot about Wendigos or Skinwalkers in, in, in Native American mythology. And part of that is because uh, a lot of these tribes, they don't want to speak of the legends. Like I said before, if you speak the name of the skinwalker, it is said to come toward you, and to attach itself to you, to haunt you, and to come closer. And no one wants that. It's for your own protection and the protection of the tribe that you do not, you know, uh, they don't tell you little, they don't tell you much about it. <clears throat> Jumbled in my words. As for the Wendigo, I'm not sure. Maybe it's the same case where you talk too much about it and the Wendigo spirit comes your way. As for the differences, off the top of my head, if I had to say what I think I know anyway, I think the Skinwalker is a witch, a dark witch, that has corrupted themselves to gain dark magic. And they, wanted the, they gained the ability to uh, change shape into animal form. I've heard from, I think, I don't remember where I heard it from, but I think I heard that skinwalkers may or may not be able to change shape completely to the animal of their choice. So that's when you get these creature sightings that are of abominations. Now, if that's really part of the mythology, that is scary. As for Wendigo, they are spirits that possess humans that have tasted human flesh. So those that partake in uh, eating other people are cursed to be insatiably hungry for human flesh forever. And they slowly become a creature of their own. All right, checking the time on that. That was at about 49 minutes flat. I had a couple of people walk by me with their dogs. Very pretty dogs, in fact. But I'll have to cut that out. If I leave it in the episode, that would be awkward. They said my log spot was a great spot. Okay, so, we were talking about the Wendigo being an insatiable spirit. And I am so mad because that movie featuring a Wendigo called Antlers was pushed back thanks to this bullcrap, uh, what can I call it before YouTube demonetizes me? The Brovid, the Brovid 18, we'll call it that, but you know what I'm talking about. I want that movie, and I want it now. I read the short story it was based on, and I highly, highly recommend you look it up. I can't remember what it was called. It may be the same title, I don't know. But if you can find it, I'll, I'll just Google Andler's short story. We'll have a good time. It's really creepy, really spooky. Well then, we've run about 49 to 50 minutes of this so far. We've got, we read, how many stories now? One, two, three, four, five. Five stories. I say that's a pretty, pretty good number. And before I get awkwardly uh, surprised by more dog walkers, I say we cut it off here. I'd like to do more episodes like this. 
longer ones uh, like to get more experienced at walking, you know, so I don't pant into the mic constantly. And eventually I'll invest in a better mic. I'd love to have a mic where uh, as I walk, the sounds are like three-dimensional. If there's a bird to my left up, left up in a tree, there's a bird to your left up, up in that tree. And the, in the uh, episode you're listening to. So we'll see about that. But if you liked this episode, mm, this random thing I've done, and you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. Feel free to criticize, dislike, or like the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and uh, oh, before I forget, stay safe out there and stay creepy. Because this world is a strange one. Is a strange one. Is a strange one. Is a strange one. Is a strange one.